Well, hello. I'm doing this live broadcast. I'm not sure how many people are going to join in, um, but I'm going to do it anyway and uh, see how it goes. This is a model uh, which I'm using for full thrust, the Starship combat game. And uh, this particular one is from a company called Brigade Models in the UK. It's in, oh, it's quite a new model of theirs. I think it's all been done, uh, designed in 3D design uh, by uh, one of the company owners of Brigade, uh, Tony Francis. And as you can see, it's quite nicely uh, proportioned for a 3D design. Very sharp, clean. And uh, I've almost finished painting it. I've got a uh, set here, which, which is like a starter fleet, which they do. And if I just take this one off its base, I can put a different one on. Um, what I've got here is Corsec engineering uh, bases. So you can see underneath that one as well. There's a kind of a metal screw on device. In fact, I've only glued it on there. And uh, then as, as part of the spaceship painting, everything's got kind of painted, uh, except for the underside of that screw on top. And that's what I screwed onto this uh, base from Corsec. I use those for most of my, um, any kind of well, flight type combat games. So Air and F and uh, Full Thrust, I use these bases. And this one, the base has got a bit uh, colored in from various airbrushings. As you can see, it's quite blurred. Um, but they're, they're actually quite sort of clean. They should look like sort of shiny bases like that, really, um, when they're new perspex. So what I shall do, because I was thinking of what I should actually paint. Uh, first of all, I thought, OK, right, I'll try and do decals or something, of which I've got a couple over here ready. I use these um, Gundam uh, decals quite often. So that's quite nice. The camera's go zooming in there. I hope that looks OK on 720p. Just realized, actually, I can't see any comments or anything. I wonder if there's any way I can edit this screen up to see a chat. Oh, I can. I'm going to type something in. Hello. So I'm not going to be typing in very much because I'm going to do some painting in a minute, but I just wonder if anybody else can see that chat there. I don't know. Um, it's all brand new to me. Never done this live broadcast before. Uh, so anyway, I'm using Gundam decals, and uh, you can see here they come in these pre-made sheets, and I just cut them out. I've put a couple on um, some of the larger ships already. Um, I say I'm not going to do that right now because um, there it is right on the end. Oh, because if I was to do that, I, you just see the uh, decals in a pot of water. It would be quite boring to watch, I think. So I thought, what should I do? And then I came up with this idea. I thought, I know what I'll do. I'll try and paint some engine glow because um, I've done sort of most of the hulls. There's still quite a bit more work needed to be done. Um, I've done some sort of glow in there. But I thought I'd do a blue sort of engine hull glow. And you'll see the various different models in this range, in this Indonesian uh, range. I've done nothing on the back of them yet. So the engines are sort of ready to be painted. They didn't really have any inset areas. They just got a sort of block on the back. So I'll just paint that as if I'm going to sort of paint the hull uh, exhaust in one color. Um, so that's a sort of medium sized ship. And you can see the back end. And then these are the smaller ones. In terms of models, I'm not as much of a fan of these small ones as I am the large ships. But oh, once you've got them um, all down uh, and painted, they look quite nice as a sort of fleet if you've got a uniform color in there. Only the, in terms of putting these together, only these large ones have sort of glue on sections on the side. These come with these kind of fins already on. Uh, these guys uh, needed the um, fins to be glued on including these larger battleship ones. And in terms of how I got to this stage so far, I airbrushed them. So when I started, they just had a, a gray, a very dark gray sort of primer put on there. And then I just went on with a sort of slightly lighter gray and then the various different colors you see there and then used a um, set of masking tape to do the stripes right over and that was really kind of, it looks quite good result, but it wasn't very technical. All I really did was just take the masking tape in thin strips and then just stick it over and then paint the different, airbrush the different colors over. 
one of the benefits actually of airbrushing which you can see is when you're doing it you're kind of not really too fussed about going over every line, every tiny piece so what you find sometimes is you get this gradation or gradation from a kind of light through to the sort of darker gray in the middle there um, and it ends up looking purposefully done even though i <laughs> spent no time doing that at all i just really just splashed on the airbrushing right so i'm gonna get some paint out now um i'll start with this one and i'll uh, get some blues out so i've got some uh, this stuff which is uh, life color paint i use it in the airbrush and i also use it for straight on painting and i also like the paints from uh, privateer press the p3 now given that the importance with glows as far as i'm concerned anyway is that you want to start with a darker color um, because it's not going to look like a glow if you don't have um, a dark color to sort of catch the eye and watch the glow come through. So since it's already sort of dark gray, but what I will do is go on with the blue anyway. And it, the, the other thing I'm going to do as well is, so I'm getting close to that so we can see it. I'm going to do the same blue on the kind of hull around there as well. So that will look like the glow is kind of extending out to the entire rear of the spaceship so yeah shake up the paints a bit oh there's another point i always say these things like little tips what i do all the time um and oh crash over here i have these um stainless steel balls uh, in a bag in fact i got these from a, a german or was it polish i think it was german uh, website but most websites now sort of do these. And I drop one of those in every pot of paint that I've got. So when I shake it, you can hear that. It just agitates the bob basically and makes the uh, paint flow a bit better. So what am I gonna do with this paint? I think for ease, I'm just gonna stick it in my silver foil tray. I'm gonna use an old brush just to transfer some over. I probably didn't really need that much. Well, I'm going to do this one here to, as a demo. Maybe should I just start with that big brush there? No, maybe not. And um, close that lid off. There's a problem with these old, I mean, probably people are, some people are experienced with these, but these old uh, P3 pots, they've got that style that uh, Games Workshop used to have in the early days. And what tends to happen after you've had them a few years, is this plastic just gets ruined on the top there. You can't see it on this one because it's quite a new part, but slowly this hardens out and you get cracks all along the side of there. Bit of a disadvantage, but that's why I prefer the uh, life color ones which have the screw on tops. Um, I can't remember if Games Works ever did. Yeah, they did do screw on tops for a while, didn't they? But they tend to get sort of clogged up as well. So, well, there's no perfect paint, is there? I'll just get stuck in now and shut up. Right, another thing I do, here we go. I um, always have a handy sprayer around. So if I want water, it, I've got clean water on hand basically and just spray a little bit in there. There we go. And paintbrush, uh, it's Tamiya. And it's in their model, uh, modeling pro brush range. I'll turn it the right way up. Yep, Tamiya modeling pro brush and the size is zero zero. So quite fine really there it's got a nice metal end to it actually which makes it really nice to control and nice to hold on to and they last quite a long time it's a sable but they are quite expensive brushes here we go right so what i tend to do when i'm painting is get a little bit of uh, water on the brush and then just mix that along the edge of that paint just so i'm not got the paint neat from the pot so it's not really really thick um, it just goes on there a little bit thinner Okay, all right now the experiment begins. I feel like that's dark somehow. I don't know why, I've got about six lights on this, but uh, hopefully it's not dark to everybody else. You can see it's going on quite sort of wet. And as I said, I'm gonna go over the whole area with this, not just the, um, not just the exhaust uh, sections or thrusters, whatever you want to call them. Actually, this bit's really hard because now I'm trying to paint and talk at the same time, and that's quite difficult, and not get my hands in the way, so a little twist around. I think actually it was quite handy having these on these uh, poles because I'd never be able to show the painting being done without that. 
I'm still prone to mistakes. So yeah, if you've ever wondered what watching paint dry looks like, this is this is it actually. Enjoy it. All right. I'm getting used to the idea that uh, I'm holding this kind of at arm's length. I feel like a like a portrait painter of the past. A long brush out in front. Normally, of course, with as with most model painters, you kind of hold the things almost like in your eyeballs while you're painting, which makes actually uh, it does study, steady things up a little bit more than uh, than what's going on here. So yeah, I think you can see that's going on quite wet and it's going on quite uh, thin, um, but it's quite a dark blue. The base colour on there is already quite dark, and I'm not too bothered like um, around the edges here that I'm not going to too worried about catching everything. But I will go around those edges there too. Is that visible? Hope so. Because that will stay dark. I won't like increase the depth of colour on there. I'm shaking now. I'm shaking. It's the alcohol. I haven't had enough. It's Friday night. Hmm. Well, highly technical bit of painting this, isn't it? Here we go. I will need to reload the brush. Now, that's one thing if you're using um, brushes with a lot of water in there as well while you're painting is that it does go a longer way compared to um, using a brush where you... So, I mean, another handy tip there. I'm sure most people watching this are probably already quite experienced painters. Yeah, look, I have made mistakes. Look at that. I've already gone on the uh, the top. I'll have to tidy those up afterwards. And down that bit there as well. Generally, how I paint is like adding bits on. I mean, you could I could have gone straight around onto those edges as I was painting the main section. But instead, what I did is I just sort of slowly built it up while I'm looking at it and I can see straight away there for example don't know if that's visible for everybody else get that in but there's a bit out there that's not done yeah so there's a base blue on there it's quite sharp it's quite dark and you can see also the blue goes pretty nicely with the yellow uh, on the back there and yeah, there you can see that I've made mistakes I've already splashed back onto the yellow area, which I'll have to tidy up afterwards. So now here comes the noise of the paint water pot. And okay, so, well, that's a reasonable base color. While I'm talking, I let that dry. And um, then I could mix some white into there and like not waste that paint. But what I'm gonna do is probably just pour some more paint in. So what was that? That was Cricks, that, that was Signar blue base a nice kind of navy blue um, p3 paints these particular ones they uh, which they do for all of the different factions in the war machine game they do sort of two colors like this um, sometimes the two colors aren't an, as natural a combination as you'd expect so you might get something that's quite gray and then they might have a sort of green tinge in the highlight so they're not normally they're not just necessarily two colors that's one slightly lighter than the other um, but in this instance they are so they do a base and then they do a highlight and usually as they're a good combo to put together so this is the signal highlight additionally i'm probably going to use some of this which is an unusual color it's called valine sinian light blue i've no idea where that name comes from but it's in the camouflage series from life color so it's probably sort of a foreign um, uh, nation's color for a particular kind of aircraft or something. But I quite like it as a color. But what I will need to do is go a bit brighter than that, definitely, when I do the glow. So I'll be adding some white toward the end. Right, without further ado, I shall get the other paint. Let's give it a shake. Now, one thing I could do, of course, is that because I've got this uh, old brush I'm using to mix in, I could mix this in now, this color with the other one that's in there already to give it more 
slow blend uh, blending but not usually uh, i don't normally get into that kind of level of like careful blending i normally just blob on the the next highlighted color so oh yeah i was talking about how these these tops go hard this one that you can see it's gone hard and the uh, the lip thing wherever it was it's kind of snapped off which is really annoying there it is kind of snaps off i mean mine are train spotting like detail of course but um can be a bit annoying as those they clearly use some kind of plastic that does age and goes hard right oh, on this down here it's just a standard really cheap you know like one pound or one dollar store kind of um oh no, i've got that on the top of the brush uh a paint thingy um paint palette and um i use silver foil on it because then i can just throw the foil away and put a new set on top without having to worry about cleaning out the things i'm in minor detail for you there so here we go so this is a lighter blue and uh so i'm not going to go on all the same areas that i already have that's quite dry there now by the looks of it and i shall go on the so oh quite probably a bit too heavily laden that brush there actually you can see and i've made a kind of a blob of it so not great um, but if you're careful you can kind of pull it back off yeah you don't necessarily want to do that that was kind of a bad move but i'm kind of okay with my brush so i know that that's not going to run off anyway but Yeah, it's quite a tricky thing, isn't it, brush control, getting it so that it's wet enough to keep on going, but not too um, wet as to just sort of pour all over the place when you put it on. Is that visible? hope so. Up in the corner there. Oh, and by the way, with this video, um, for anybody that's not seeing it live now, and I can see now up to 2,000, no, three viewers, um, you can um i'm going to save it anyway so it's going to be uh, watchable again for hours of uh, home viewing so not going into quite as many corners building up the paint here just being careful and steady taking my time no rush um slowly Again, I'm finding this looking dark from here, but like I said before, I've got like a thousand lights beaming on me. I'm sweating like a pig. Let me try this again, see if I can get... Oh, there's one thing I can do. While I hold that there and I just continue talking, I have got here some brightness control. Yeah, slightly better. I'll leave it like that. Okay. So right, it's kind of coming together. Probably should really put like a little bit on those edge sections as well. Right, when I'm quite thin up there, I'll go on there again with a bit more. Let's say with painting, my my kind of well, it's not a mantra really, but it's it's kind of one of those things where my general approach is go on easy, and then you can build up because you can never really take it away if you've made a load of mess. But of course, you can correct yourself. But right, well, that's not bad. You can sort of see now the light and the dark on those areas around the back end, as well as the mistakes I've made with the uh, blue going over onto the yellow. And around there I can see right now do I go on to the real tiny edges with that I will need to at some point because with the glow effect you kind of need to sort of build it up so I may as well go on the edges slightly 
trying to see that it's in focus apologies if it's not still getting used to this webcam oh for those interested just so that i can keep talking um i'm using a webcam from is it from logitech i can't see the name on it actually but it does it does do hd 1080p but obviously with this live broadcast it doesn't I think the highest, highest it will go up to is 720p for the uh, Google Live broadcast. So here we are again, making sure it's trying to make sure it's in focus for you. Sorry if I keep moving out. Go around those edge sections. You know, with anything like this that you're slowly building up, it doesn't look like much until you sort of get towards the end, really. I'm making excuses there, but... What's that? Is that it? It's kind of visible. My brush is going over the top of it. Oh, well, it's silent there. We all know that dead air is a crime. So, uh, but I don't want to just keep on talking nonsense at the same time. But uh, there we go, building up from that dark colour. You know, for example, so when this is done, um, all these sort of areas, these smaller kind of areas around the back, we'll just leave those. I won't need to like really highlight it up around there because that will look like a general blue glow in the region rather than um, having to do any more extra shading and layers in there. I might, uh, well, I probably will, now I'm talking about it, go out to these edges with a slight highlight and again right at the bottom here just to look like the glow is reaching out to these extremities of the um, rear of the ship hull. It's a bit tricky really to know what to do with middle because you're kind of tempted to do like a white dot in the middle or something like real harsh glow. Well, we shall build up to that now and see what happens. Here we go. Right, next colour then. Again, obviously what I'm doing, I'm pouring out enough paint that mentally, normally, I'd be using to kind of paint all these other ones around here, but um, kind of just on that one now. So I'm wasting all this paint that's being left in there. And just for those interested, that noise you can hear in there, if you can hear it, that's because I put those agitator steel um, bearing balls into the bottom of every one of my pots of paint, just in case you've come in a bit later into the video. So this is live color paint. They make it in Italy. Um, in fact, interestingly, uh, like a real train spotter's like comment for you is that um, blue, cobalt blue, I think, originated in Italy. I think they were the first country, probably 16th century, something like that. They came up with blue. And then apparently for like the next 100 years, um, just about every nation wanted to use blue in every picture they had. And, uh, and they did. Um, quite interesting, really, when you suddenly, to be in an age where they suddenly discover a, how to represent a particular color. Um, right, I'm losing concentration, focus, right. So, yeah, I've kind of shaken that up. Again, use my duff old brush to put some out. I don't need anything like what I'm putting out here, but uh, it's easier just to sort of splash it out. Again, really like the pots on these ones. Nice screw top, um, a, neat, uh, a neat paint pot, really. I haven't had one of these dry up or go wrong or anything yet, these uh, live color paints. They do, they do a good job of it. So, right, so I'm seeing straight away, I'm thinking, oh, right, this color I've just put down here is a lot uh, brighter, probably too harsh or bright. So I'm probably going to, I'm just going to pull some of the paint from the uh, Signal highlight I've got there and I'm just dragging it through um, to make a kind of half, half shade between the two. Otherwise, that might have been too harsh. It's moving all over the place. Right, so paintbrush again. Um... I think, like I said, right, I'm going to do is go in those edge bottom bits there. Mm, probably a bit too much on that side. I know there I went over the edge. Let's see. No, no, oh, yeah, I did sort of go over the edge there. Look. I'm being harsh on myself now. Harsh task, task master. All right, around this side. Can you see that? Yeah, I think so. So 
so anyway, like, oh, even though the Italians invented blue, I mean, obviously they don't own the colour blue, but uh, I've got some Italian friends who probably like to believe that. So I don't know what I'm going to do down here. I don't want to make these look like jewels. That would just be wrong. That would be the wrong painting guide. So I'm trying to work out what I'm going to do here. I think what I'll do is probably do darker in the middle with light around the outside um, on the basis that um, whatever metals or something on the edge of these thrusters are receiving intense heat and going kind of white hot and just because that seems like the right thing to do right at this very point in time Can you see any of that i hope so <laughs> apologies to any italians that are listening right Okay, so you can sort of see there now something's happening, as in I have got a sort of shade coming up on the bottom. It looks a bit washed out at the moment. It, it needs to be a little bit harsher, I think, but I'll get there as I do finer edges. So continuing on with this theme, using this mix-up of paint. Oh, I'm out of the camera zone there. So there's ridges on here, and I'll use the edge of the brush, tiny edge, to do those ridges. I'm just trying to get the right angle so that the brush is drawn along the edge. That's happening now, although you probably can't see it. I don't know. Yeah, I think you might be able to see that as it's happening. And then I'm going to draw on that edge too. Well, it's a bit like dry brushing, but it's wet. Panel lining, I guess you'd call that panel lining. Right now, doing a spectacular kind of uh, contortionist style painting with my hand in a weird position to get it steady. Yeah, you can see, like, we've got the kind of panel lining thing happening on the edge. So it's just like edge edging, really. And going on there as well. And I'm going to try and get because there's two sort of stages to these on the other edges too. Slowly does it. Okay, have a look back at what's going on. See on the edge. So a slight glow. Obviously, I've not finished yet, but uh, you get the feeling that it's coming together slowly. Well, I can just hear someone's come back from walking the dog. They're probably going to come charging in. Look out. Right. Now I'm going to use, rather than, as I said, I mixed these two colours here together. So this life colour I mixed with the P3 signal highlight. I'm just going to use that neat now. So I've got a little bit left on there. Just put a bit of water from there. Still using my small splat of water. Actually, it's excellent using this. I mean, I know I can't really shout about these enough. This is a Woodland Scenic sprayer, but you could use a any kind of little sprayer like this. Just really handy. Because like whenever you need water, you're like, I need water. And you're getting out of a dirty paint pot, you know, when you're trying to go to your tap or something, just having a sprayer on hand is really handy. Right, I'll shut up about the sprayer now. Um, so I'm just making sure I'm getting the right consistency of paint off there again. As you can see, I, I, I use a really heavily laden brush. I kind of do quite often, um, which does trip me up sometimes if, uh, if it's too wet. So, right. Okay, so this is even brighter. So I don't really want to go everywhere with it, but I'll try and get onto the... Get the focus right again. I wonder if just now, if I can just get this focus in even closer, I'll try. No, that's not working. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, that's kind of working. Uh, 
Oh, kind of splattered that on there, didn't I? That was a bit of a mistake, really. I'm coming back around to this sort of area here. Yeah, you can kind of see it building up. That's a bit better now, actually. I can be able to zoom in there a bit more. Again, just working on the edges there. And there's an edge there I want to. Ah, yeah, yeah, that's working. I can zoom in now. So it's trying to get the angle on this so that I can show you what I'm doing, but at the same time get to these awkward side bits by sort of putting the, my hand into the strangest of positions. That's too close. That's about right. So right now, because I've got that brush again, see it's got quite a lot of paint on, but it's not much in there at all. Um, and I can go along that top. It's really just giving it a tiny panel line. And in there, that needs to be. I can feel the paint drying out now in there, but it's going on. There it is. So yeah, trying desperately to avoid it looking like just jewels on the back there, but I don't think it's looking too bad. It does need more of a glow effect though. More work required, All right. Just uh, just taking a minor break while I show you from a distance actually here. So if I can change the focus. There you go. So you can see, just in case you've been in close the whole time and not able to see what's going on. So you can see then basically those edges are picked out and are kind of glowing, kind of edge, neon-like a bit, I guess, around the edges. Right. So what I'll do now is I'll do a little bit more of that with that same colour, I think. Get the focus back in again here. There we go. If only I could hold that in one slot and not actually move out of focus, but I shall try. With a glow, I don't mind too much going on with quite a heavy blob um, because that kind of works for glows. I don't know what if you ever look at the side of a piece of shiny metal or something really reflective, it does give you quite a big white. There's a lot of white um, in a reflection. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to do there. Hey, that's, that's staying in focus. One thing I've quite often done with little glows, I've had, I had some other spaceships I did where I did a glow on the back, is that i kind of done this kind of dot-based um, shading as well. So I'm doing that here where instead of just going on with a single blob, I'm kind of putting lots of tiny dots of paint on. And 
and that will hopefully break up the kind of chance of this looking like it's too much of a kind of dual effect. And more sparkly, I guess, is the kind of word to try and look for. Well, it doesn't sound very serious, does it? Sparkly, sparkly engines, no. So there we go. Just twist it around. So I now need a lighter colour. And to get that, all I'm going to do actually is just mix some white into these colours I've already got. So again, I'm using a life colour paint, just a standard matte white, shaking it up. Right, I'm checking the time. Okay, I've done 38 minutes of this so far. I think um, this will be the last colour I do and the last sections. I don't want to go on forever. Uh, just doing this glow effect, but uh, actually what am I doing? I should be transferring that paint out. So again, just use my old brush to transfer a blob of this white. Sometimes when I'm transferring paints, especially with um, airbrushing, I will uh, use um, these pipettes and they are only like 3p each if you buy like a pack of 30 or something on um on ebay but they are handy and you can cut them to different sizes to get more paint up inside there um very handy for like decanting paint from one thing to another I always keep a few of those around but i'm not using that at the moment um so okay i've put the paints back on show you can't really see what i'm doing there in detail but i'm drawing that white now into these other blues that i've got Um, in fact, I'm mixing a couple of those different blues that I left on there, a little splash of water as well. It's going a bit grey, put a bit more blue in there. Apologies, this is a really difficult bit to see, but... Right, back to action again, try and get this into the right place. Right. Show you my paintbrush again. No, not very visible. But yeah, see, I've got some on the end there. This brush is quite an old one, actually. So, uh, oh, here comes the dog. Apologies for that. Oh, hello, Mabel. Right, you'll hear some snorting in a minute. That will be the dog. Right, here we go. Is that in focus? Just about. It's not going to be quite as easy to see this now because I'm down to the tiny fine edges and I'm at the edge of uh, the technology's potential. Mm. More paint needed. I don't mind this being quite white now actually, that was one of the things. Again, going on with areas like this with quite a big sort of blob. Now on the bottom. Top. The uh, dotting I'm doing is actually causing me to vibrate the whole camera and table, so apologies for that. There goes the dog. Sorry, it's going to start snoring now. I say with this kind of painting, it is a case of just building it up. I'm not too fast. That's something I probably didn't mention earlier on, but I'm concentrating more along the top edge 
um, because I don't really bother painting the underside of these ships. And you can see that if I move it around, didn't really paint anything on there. It's just the, uh, the, the very dark gray. And then as you come around, you get the, the sides aren't really painted very much, but the top I do a lot of because mostly when you've got these on the table, you don't look underneath. You don't really even really look at the sides. It's kind of makes it look like it's in shadow as well. Um, so there we go. It's coming on. It's coming on. Yes, you can start to see now that the little dots I'm putting on there are slowly sort of adding to the the shade and the sort of thrust effect. And the, as I started, I've not I've never gone back to those darker areas in there again. I've just left them dark. But they're still blue, so they still look like they're taking some kind of a glow from the main engine areas. Again, I think I, I probably didn't go into it earlier, but I could have um, done all of this. I could have done some metal work around there um, in a darker color or something. But I decided just to, um, for sort of tabletop viewing of these, just to keep the the entire back a sort of a glowing blue color. There we go. Right, so I'll keep on going with this white. As I said, it's going to be the last bit I do now. Um, and it's almost up to completely sort of a white color now. Uh, you can see sort of there's my splodge of white that's gone on and the various blues as I've highlighted up. And now it's got a sort of almost white color here. And the same on the brush to show you, try and get in focus. All right, sorry. Right, here we go. Going back on with that dotting again now. Handy having the zero zero brush, this Tamiya zero zero brush. It's really uh, holds a nice fine point, especially if you use a lot of water on the brush. Can you see that? I doubt it. So I can see there from the side, and this is because I've been doing this on camera. <laughs> I've missed a kind of a whole section down here where really I should have been putting on more, more color, but I can go back on there now. Again, I'm dotting it along rather than just one long blob to give it a bit more of a kind of a sparkle effect again there. Okay, so there you go. Got kind of dark in the middle with a light on the outside. I'm sort of happy with it. I feel like I need some more white or something on there though. Um, so I am going to go now on with some neat white. Yeah, almost in focus. Can't tell whether it's my glasses or this actual camera, but here we go. Try and keep that exactly there. Yeah, I've gone quiet now. I've not breathed in about five minutes. Or maybe I should have said taken a breath.
Yeah, happier now. Definitely a bit happier since I put more white in there. So that's it. I think I'm going to end now. I will show you in a bit more detail the other ships quickly, just in case you've come on later, or if you stayed for the whole lot and uh, managed not to get too bored. In fact, I was going to say, if you were here earlier on, that maybe we should just put this on in the background instead of just like trying to focus on it 100%, because it could get a bit boring. But uh, here we go. I'm going to get us into focus again for distant viewing. Try it. Uh. Hey, that'll do. So let me move my junk out of the way and give it a slow twirl. Yeah, I think I could do better. I think I could do more. I think, um, as with all these things, it's a bit experimental. These are unusual in the, the other ships, which I'll take this off there now. I think it's looking quite bright. But the other ships, like this one, I'll just screw it onto the uh, Corsair engineering base. You can see on the back, to point out with the brush, that the exhaust for the sort of thruster is a bit more of your traditional, where it's inset. It's very hard when you've got that kind of. Um, just flat end to make it look like there's some sort of exhausts going on. But uh, I'm quite happy. I think when they're all sort of bright looking like that, they're going to look okay as a consistent fleet. And so, yes, yeah, I say, this has that sort of inset area. And when you do that, you can trim up the inside edges to look like they're catching the glow. It's much, much easier. So for anybody designing uh, model spaceships, always try and put a rim around the edge of the uh, the exhaust because it does make it a bit easier to do a glow. And you can see that where I've gone in, you can sort of see it, where I've gone inside there and I've done a, a sort of glow building up um, using a kind of orange on red. And it does look a little bit more um, easier to uh, to do that glow. But I'll hold on to this again and just sort of show you the, Final sort of walk around what it looks like from looking above like that. You can see it's got kind of an edge to it. You can see my mistakes there. I've gone over. I'll have to go back over with that yellow just to clean it up along the edge. And yeah, and I'll go in close again so you can see. I'll just get that focus working. Oh, there you go. So you can see my my dots and stuff on the back there, which have kind of given it that sort of star glow effect i'm going to coin that phrase um <laughs> but there you go it looks okay to me i think that's what i'm going to do with the others but i say i'll probably be a bit more successful when i'm doing it with an exhaust like one of these bigger ones because you've got that nice lip to build up around the edge of and then it will all look like it's glowing from inside um yeah so very nice ships these again just as a reminder these are the indonesian ships from brigade models i airbrushed them put some stripes of um Masking tape over. In fact, you can see, just to sort of give you some tips there, you can see where the masking tape didn't quite adhere inside the the kind of crevice there. So my masking tape went over the original grey, and then when I sprayed on again, it kind of let the, the other colour go up underneath. And um, generally speaking, you could get to you could go really far with it and try and make your masking tape really stick into the corners but on something this small it's really hard and the final result i think uh well i know for sure that i'm quite happy with that result even though i've got things like gaps there on the stripe overall when that's on the table it's going to look fine really in fact actually when you look from above it you lose that uh, edge that's there anyway so there you go and again I've got another one of those sort of battleship ones and a couple others in the small fleet. And this is the uh, Brigade Models Indonesian fleet. And it's in it's the starter uh, fleet set that they sell, uh, sell on their website. So that's it. Thanks very much for listening in for 52 minutes now. So that went on quite a long time. Um, this is going to be uploaded onto YouTube. So if you missed some of the earlier bits, it will reappear on YouTube. 
and you can watch it over and over and over again. Okay, thanks very much for listening in. See you all later. Bye.